Hi, Bolanle. <laughs> Thanks for joining. Hi, everybody. Hello, hello. Thank you. hi everyone good evening thank you for letting me know you can hear me loud and clear thank you for joining we just have to wait for our guest hi everyone i hope you are having an amazing evening thank you thank you for joining thank you so much for your support and your beautiful beautiful energy thank you just waiting for our guests to join us Good evening, Moji. Good evening, Itsuno. I see you all. Thank you for joining today. Waiting for Dr. Chris Imomolen to join the conversation. Hi, Dorothy. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining today. I appreciate your support. <laughs> I see my Twitter people. Two years we wrote together on Twitter, and you know, to see you all here, I'm totally grateful. To, you know, to everyone. Thank you just going to move ahead to see if our guest is on standby okay waiting for our guest to join you can't hear me can you hear me now oh people are saying they can't hear me can you hear me now please let me know if you can hear me thank you waiting for how i guess to join it's not here yet thank you um idiot um a couple of other people said they can hear me you might want to log out and log back in try that see if that works thank you Thank you for letting me. You can hear me, baby. We are waiting for. Our guests. Okay. 
Hi Princess, hi Immaculate. Thank you for your patience. I think um, Professor is trying to join as well. Let's hope that um, the network won't mess things up today. But thank you. So how is everyone doing? Um, just very quickly, how are you doing? Just let me know in the comments. How are you feeling this uh, beautiful evening? Okay, waiting for our guest. I am good. I'm good, Bimi. I'm I'm doing good. Oh, Kafayat. All right, I'll look into that after the session. Uh, it gets overwhelming sometimes saying that in my inbox, so I apologize for that. It's not intentional. Oh, sorry, slim girl. <laughs> All right, thank you for letting me know. So I'm waiting for our guest, just as you are waiting, hoping that he's going to join us anytime soon. I'm so ready to get into this conversation to know his plans for us especially with the young people what you know his props plan for 2023 thank you for joining everyone i see my nephew hi Sliman. oh don't forget to share today's affirmation that's true i've not shared my affirmation today on facebook yes i'm going to do that <laughs> oh yes professor has joined us so uh, prof please okay okay waiting for prof to join the conversation good evening prof Your camera is on the other way. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Good evening. Sorry. How are you today? I'm fine. I'm okay. Oh, great. I don't know your volume. You want to turn it up because we, we can't hear you very well, sir. sir. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Loud okay. and clear, crispy, clear. How are you this evening, Prof? I'm fine. I'm very okay. And um, mm -hmm. as you can see, it's been a busy, busy, busy day all through. I can imagine. Yes. So, running around, building the nation, it's not um, an easy job if you want to build the nation. So, very uh, so I can... I can imagine. So thank you so much for joining us today. But before we even get into everything, I want to say congratulations to you for, I mean, becoming the presidential candidate for your party. Um, I want to ask you, how was the journey? You know, you get into this point where you were chosen as, you know, the anointed candidate for a court party. You know, um, we live in a country where people... Um, kind of don't want to believe in mm. people who believe in their dream. Of course, and mm. um, first of all, must believe in your own dream. Mm -hmm. You first must believe in what you want to do because you know what you mm -hmm. have and what you can. Mm -hmm. I think that is the thing. So because when we started and when I announced to my affiliates, my associates, that mm -hmm. I would be running for presidency mm -hmm. and um, I need support, you know, they were like, Chris, <laughs> you know Nigeria is a very um, politics is very dirty here yeah, and um, mm -hmm. you need to be careful you need to but I know what I was out for and I mm -hmm. knew what I was going for and I said mm -hmm. to myself I was going to go for it till mm -hmm. the very end so mm -hmm. we went to for a party because we mm -hmm. needed a party that believe in the ideology of a mm -hmm. new Nigeria mm -hmm. so the first thing we did was to identify with the party 
that mm -hmm. believe in the ideology of a new Nigeria, a party that necessarily have not been, I don't have so much stain in terms mm -hmm. of the way Nigeria envisage and see the two major parties and other parties. Mm -hmm. You know, Nigeria wants critical change and um, those are part of the things that influence our decision. So we checked around and we saw Accord as a party that, yes, it's not too new. Accord is 15 years, more than 15 years. But again, it's new to Nigeria because um, it's not a party that have occupied the presidency seat. And um, of, of course, they have, the Accord has had a governor and some other seat, but for presidency. So for me, it was a, it was a comfortable um, seat for me to say, okay, Accord. Then we started the race. Mm -hmm. we, 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 we started it and we, yeah, we are today. Mm -hmm. Presidential candidates, Accord party. Congrats. <laughs> and thank you so much for, you know, telling us about the journey um, and being here today. So very quickly, for those of you who don't know, I'm just going to read a short profile, you know, um, about Professor Chris. Um, his profile is very powerful. So I had to, <laughs> I had to just capture something for you guys. He's an educationist, a university professor, a serial entrepreneur, a business mogul, and a Nigerian politician. He's the founder of the Joint Professional Training and Support International Limited and a unique foundation, a non-profit, non-governmental non organization. He is, of course, a presidential aspirant of the platform of the Accord Party ahead of the 2023 Nigerian presidential elections. So once again, congratulations. And thank you for been here today and you know all the amazing work that uh, you you're doing uh, one of your team was just telling me about the scholarship you are also giving to young people who are presently or you know at home due to us strike you want to touch on that very quickly yes you know um i while growing up university education was one of the toughest achievement i i, I achieved because i knew what it took me personally you know, someone who has lost his father at the age of 12. And um, very difficult. I came from a polygamous home. And uh, my mother was the second wife. And you know, it was kind of difficult for me to go through or pull through the university system. You know, it got to a time while I was in the university that I asked someone that um, I would like to borrow your textbook. And the person to me said, Prof, we know your shirt. We don't need you to give us an ID card as a sign to identify you. Because I was always on a shirt or two. That is why even till now that God has blessed us. You would not see me wearing bogus clothes. Or I'm used to it. So when I'm coming live, I know you would have been like, oh, why is Prof coming in like this? You should dress, wear, wear a suit. This is my life. <laughs> I am, yes, this, this is what I am. And um, possibly I might just be the first president in Nigeria that will become a president on a shirt and a jean. And um, leave because I believe so much in what you can offer. Yes. So we live in Africa where people also judge you and rate you by what you wear, how you appear. But again, CEOs of this world, those who are great today, have defied those principles. Mm. Billion Max, Jeff Benzel, mm -hmm. um, even in, Af in Nigeria, Dangote, they are very simple persons. Mm. So it was very difficult for us. So I said to myself as a promise that I was going to make education affordable, accessible. For people so we started so many years ago and today not by our power but by the grace of god we've been able to give over 500,000 000 nigerian scholarship to study any degree with our universities mm -hmm. and, um, and it's so wonderful it's fulfilling for me to see how we have been fulfilling life then seeing our super problem with the federal government always going on strike i said to myself i do not want to talk about this i want to find a solution to it so what we did was to open one of our universities, we opened the online portal, and we have asked all Nigerians who are currently at home to apply for a digital scholarship in order to afford them to continue their study. When students stay at home for too long, one month, two months, there is a future impact, negative impact on the national development. Many of our leaders do not understand this. Yeah, we understand it critically. So from that heart, we came up with it and we asked Nigerian students, please, instead of staying at home, waiting for us and government to settle, you need to be studying online. We've had millions of applications mm -hmm. and um, we, we've opened the portal and 
Nigerian students who have applied currently, some of them have gotten their scholarship letter. Some of them will start their study online. This does not truncate their program with the Nigerian University in case they resume tomorrow. They can still continue. Why they still continue with the online program? At the end of the day, this setback to them would now become um, a blessing in these guys. They will be graduating with their local university program here and also get an international certificate for free. Okay. All because of we trying to have an insight to see how we can solve a problem, not just talking about the problem alone. Yeah. Thank you very much for sharing that. And, um, you know, my first question, you had mentioned something about the way you grew up, losing your dad at the age of 12. What were your survival strategies like? You know, for a person who had lost his dad at such an early age, and for you to have gotten to this stage you have right now, three PhDs, if I'm right, and, yeah. you know, just making a name for yourself, just... For those who are listening, we don't want people to feel aspire to perspire. It's just one road and boom, you are there, right? So just quickly, just tell us your journey, your growing up, your childhood. Yeah, okay. Um, I believe something. Something must motivate a man not to give up. Sometimes what motivates us might be unconscious or might be conscious. One of the things that motivated me was the fact that I wanted to take care of my mother. I saw my mother became a widow at 39 years and stood by us and we grew up for another 20 years we were living in one room we were feeding from mouth to mouth and i said to myself that i wanted to train this i want to i want to give back to this woman mm. i saw the way that is why i don't joke with women one of our policies will be centered about uh, female gender equality mm -hmm. to see because even my ngo is set up basically to support women vulnerable and youth so a lot of people will say, oh, like you love your mom so much. Yes, I do. And I say it everywhere. But I, I love my wife more because <laughs> she's... Uh, but before so you that means, <laughs> Yeah, before I cause Wala. <laughs> so, that means, so much. To say that mm -hmm. I want to take care of this woman. Mm -hmm. So I never gave up. Mm -hmm. I, I, was one, I was one of those good child that, you know, when, when you give them school fees sometimes, they, they, they were not having so much. So when they give me school fees to go back to school to pay school fees, I was saying to myself that I want to come back home. Before I finish school, I want to give back to my parents. I want to give back to my mom. So mm -hmm. while I was in the University of Benin, I did my first degree there. You know, I, I was always saying to myself, I want to give back home. I want to give money back home. So I grew the habit of entrepreneurship. I grew the habit of volunteering in fellowships. You know, any, anywhere I find myself, I always want to serve even if it's for free. And what I was doing unknowingly to me was that I was discovering myself more and I discovered that I had this inherent ability to market anything. I had this gift to market, to speak of something and people would just buy into it. That was when I discovered that because I threw in myself for service. You know, this is where people get it from. People don't want to serve. People don't want to volunteer. And when we don't do that, what happens is we don't discover who we are. We don't know our strengths. We don't know our weaknesses. I was able to identify my strengths because I was volunteering. I was working initially without even wanting financial reward. I just wanted to work. I just wanted to show that I could do it. I could do something. Mm -hmm. That was what I was doing. And that was how I grew up, by serving in the church, by serving in fellowship, by serving everywhere I found myself. I went mm -hmm. to the service as, um, as Copa, my Copa. I was the CLO, like Copa, Lision, you know, all those things in Nigeria. And I was yeah. always wanting to serve. In the camp, I was the leader of our camp, you know, and when I finished school, you know, I said to myself and that I was not going to work for anybody. Do you know, there's this funny thing. Do you know that I've never applied for a job in my life? Wow. As, yeah, I've never used, because I, when I feel, immediately I feel, because I was like, if I work, how can I take care of this woman? I told you what motivated me. Or if I work, I'm going to get a job of 50000 per month. Before I remove my, I cannot. So in as much as I've, I've discovered one thing about me, I, do, I could market. So I started going to company and telling them that don't, don't, I don't want to work for you. I want to work with you. Just give me your service. Let me go with it and let me sell it and pay me anything you can pay me. That was how I started. And I started selling courses. I started selling things massively. In short, the first course I took was health and safety course. 
and I started selling it, I sold it and safety course in the state called Kitty. For the first time in the history of the safety professional, they had over 300 in the program. It was me. And in, back in those days, Kitty state, Kitty state is not a state where people know about safety. But I was able to sell safety to the farmer. I was able to sell safety to everybody that they paid for it. Imagine people paying for safety costs in the Kitty State. Safety costs, you know, is Port Harcourt, Lagos, oil and gas region. But Ekiti State, mm -hmm. that had mm -hmm. industries, and people were coming because of the way I was able to sell it to them. Mm -hmm. So, so we, we brought the instructors from Lagos, mm -hmm. and they trained over 300 people, on it, and they were shocked. And the man said something, said, Chris, you can become a governor because the way you are selling this course, even we, it's as if we should take the course again. Like, the instructor was telling me that the way I'm selling it, even though them, it's as if they should take the course again because it's so... So I discovered that. So I refuse to work for any company. If any company engage me, I tell them, let me work with you. I can sell this better than your marketing agent is selling it. That was how I started. And we started our company. Everything we have done, till today, I'm still the chief marketing officer of my company. Even if I don't see myself as a CEO, I see myself as a person marketing all the products. Mm. Today, we have built different industries from real estate oil and gas, mm -hmm. you know. And my quest to study, to have PhD was because I I couldn't go to school. It was very difficult for me to complete my first degree. Mm -hmm. And I said to myself that I will complete anything that is in education. If there is another thing after being, being a professor, mm -hmm. eh, a professor emeritus, I must get to the apex of mm -hmm. it just, just to prove myself. It's just for, my, it's just a, for me, it's personal achievement for me. To be able to conquer every uh, what's it called ladder of academic achievement mm -hmm. is not yes for me. So I read, I research, mm -hmm. and and yet I'm also a business person. Mm. That's interesting. And you have two PhDs and three master's degree. How for now? You, yes. For now. So you're still yes. okay. Wait. If you become the president, you still intend to continue studying. Is that of course. I will. Oh. Yes, I will. I will. For oh. now, mm -hmm. I have two PhDs. I have one PhD in engineering and research. Mm -hmm. I have another PhD in education and management. Mm -hmm. And I have master. Yes. Even more than three masters now. Wow. But the last my CV it was three. And wow. I have professional. I've done short. My professional courses I've done is more than a 60-page spirit of bind from oil and gas to management to mm -hmm. ICT to finance to mm -hmm. engineering, to, mm -hmm. you know, I just want to know. I want to learn. I want to know. I want to know more. Because to me, knowledge is power. Mm -hmm. If something is hidden in a book, and mm -hmm. what is in the book is what will make you great. If you don't read it, you cannot be great. Mm -hmm. Africans, people said Africans are not readers. I like to read. I like to study. Not just to study to pass exam. To study to acquire knowledge. So I, 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 by the grace of God, there are so much in me that I know. But yet, I still consider myself not to know nothing because there's still much to be known that is yet unknown. Absolutely. Just like the most man in the world, Socrates, when he was about dying, he was mm. asked, you are the most knowledgeable man. How do you feel? He said, ah, there's so much yet unknown. So I consider myself knowing nothing. Mm. Yes, yeah, so for me, to the beginning, and I believe we are still going to conquer more fields in this. Uh, in this. Uh. Thank you very much. So, was it your childhood that propelled you to start Unique Foundation? You know, your experience as a child was it? So, tell us more about the work you do at Unique Foundation. Yeah. Okay. For Unique Foundation, you no, know, there is a lot of challenges in the society, especially in Africa. We have um, children who cannot afford to go to school. Mm -hmm. We have widows, we have single mothers, mm -hmm. we have persons who, you know, we don't have this social, uh, what's it called, care, welfare mm -hmm. system for Nigerians. Mm -hmm. Nigeria is a country where, you know, we, we ask God for everything. Mm -hmm. You know, even those things that government should do for us, we still ask God to do for them for us. You know, mm -hmm. like in other parts of the world, mm -hmm. when you don't have a job, you can go to welfare or and get some stipend you know mm -hmm. but over here we don't have such amenities then it means that individuals can come in to see how to support themselves 
my childhood was very rough also it all actually influenced what i'm doing and what i've been doing so, but it's just for me a quest to see how we could assist humanity a quest to see how we can give back to people who do not have the vulnerables in our society you know so we set up that we set out that journey to see how we could help women how we could train how we could provide funding for them in our only two capacity I we could help villages to secure power. We've done a lot of power projects to various communities where we buy transformers, we help them to. That to me is one of the greatest achievements. The joy I see in the faces of people that have been helped is the greatest point of my life. When I see people shed tears because they're happy because of the support you've given them, a woman once told her, said for 100 years, they've not had electricity in that community. That somebody told them, a prophet said, a man will come one time, like 50 years ago, and give us light. That the prophecy had come to pass. 50 years ago, I was not, I was not giving birth to. So if people believe in prophecy, okay, let's say, okay, that is the prophecy come to pass. But that is the joy, saying that you are raising others up. You know, and the painful part is that you cannot do more than what you have. You know, in 2020, 2019, we did about 6,000 supports for 6,000 Nigerians. We had over 4 million applications, and we could only do 6,000. So we had to select 6,000, provide funding for their business, train them, and, um, you know, and again, another challenge is that many Africans, not Africans, we Nigerians, let me use that word, uh, because, you know, my support is out, out, even outside Nigeria. We have in Togo, Sierra alone, and other parts in Ghana, Benin Republic, too, where we also have our NGO, is that many African entrepreneurs, Usually, what we have found out is that they, they do not have necessarily the knowledge to sustaining that business beyond the fact that the environment itself does not help to build business. So what every entrepreneur does believe is that every, all we need is money. Knowledge for the business is more important than the money itself. So what we do is to see how we can garnish this before you get funds for your business. Let's put you through, let's train you how you can secure your business, how you can prosper, how you can move from point A to point B. Then the little you are giving should be enough to help you. And to God be the glory, we've been having testimonies of people who we have supported, you know, farmers, projects, anchor borough projects, you know, and even states, Aquai Bomb State, there was a time we trained youth in Aquai Bomb State and I think that was 2017. And the state government refused. The, 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 the arrangement was that we were going to train, then the state government was going to give them the startup kits. Mm -hmm. It means that we would train them for free, maybe for Kanaiza, um, people that fry Akara by the street. We train them how to fry a very good Akara. Those that, uh, those that um, tailors, shoemakers, we're going to train them. And government was supposed to provide them with startup kits. After we trained them, we sent spent money training them, we waited for government to provide this, and government could not. We had to borrow the government money to, to help its own people, which is our people. As I speak to you, nothing has been refunded. But we are not talking about refund. I was happy, at least. It's about life. Whatever we have in life cannot be taken out of this world. Absolutely. Whatever we have, we'll leave it here. So for me, the best investment is the investment we invest in people. Mm. If we invest in the right people. Mm. So these are a lot of things, a lot of things motivated, but majorly my childhood, my upbringing, having to see that God has blessed me without knowing anybody. Because where I am today is purely favor from God. Maybe maybe prayer answered of my parents too. The work they've worked, God just decided to, okay, let me bless this boy. Mm -hmm. so, and I will continue to do the best I can mm -hmm. to see how to uplift my people around me. That is what we are doing. Thank you very much. And you have three universities in of different course. continents. Yes. Why not Nigeria? Why okay. did you choose to, you know, establish those universities outside the country? Okay. Um, there are different reasons. Number one, when I started my training institute, I, have a, I, had a global, I still have a global concept for whatever I do. Anything I do, I try to make sure that it's an organization that can meet up with global standard. 
Mm-hmm. We were looking at an organization where Nigerians could be trained and they can apply for a job anywhere. They can use certificate anywhere. We understand the limitation some of the Nigerian certificate has, especially when they, when they get out of Nigeria. That was the first uh, motive to establishing university. Because, I, because my, my concept about education was not just about Nigeria. I, I, I want to, and I'm still expanding the training organization everywhere. Anywhere we see that it's easier to set up a university, we set it up there. So, number two, is because Nigeria by itself, we started a university project in Nigeria, even before we started a university project in these other three countries. But we have gotten approval in those three countries. Nigeria is still ongoing. It's difficult to run business in Nigeria, you know, because of a lot of factors. Corruption, you have to know somebody. Even if you have other countries, once you have what it takes, they give you the accreditation. But Nigeria, once you have what it takes, and you don't have the people that it takes, hmm. I don't get it. So we have an ongoing project of university in Nigeria, but we have not gotten accreditation because accreditation for university in Nigeria is highly politicized. It is the president that signs that approve a university in Nigeria. The a university, for a university to be approved in Nigeria, it must be taken to the FEC meeting, Federal Executive Council. It must be discussed there for a university to be approved. So for it to be approved, you must go, must go through a rigorous political system. We don't have that will. We are just businessmen looking at how we can empower people. So that is it's still there. They are checking it. They are checking it. And we believe that one day, once they are okay, they will, they will vet it. So that is why. So and we still continue to establish. And we just got approval for our school in Dubai. Just within six months, there are countries all over the world where you start a business. In, in Rwanda, for example, you can register a company within six hours. There is, there is room for organizations to strive. In Ghana, for example, you know, there, there is a friendly environment for business to strive. In Nigeria, you know, we, st- we need to digitalize a lot of things. We need to ensure that we, we, we give room for investors. And I always say the first investor you have in your country is your own citizen. Your citizen is your first investor. Look at them as investor. Create an enabling environment for them to do business. If you cannot fund them, let them have an enabling environment. Then secondly, those who are coming from, from outside the country to invest. There are the second tiers of investor. When your people by itself begin to set up, find it easy to set up business outside Nigeria, it becomes a problem. Unemployment rate will increase. You know, there will be there will be a lot of, look at the crime rate. The crime rate in Nigeria is tied to the hardship, economic hardship. That is when the economy is becoming too toxic, crime rate also increases. So to your question again, two reasons why we set up universities outside. One, because we want to globalize, we want to globalization of, um, we want to globalize our business. And two, because ease of doing business outside Nigeria is far better. Of course, again, our university process approval is still ongoing in Nigeria. Thank you very much. So based on your experience and, you know, in view of the topic and why we're here today, how can we as young people build sustainable paths to social impact? Yes, number one, passion. Everything I'm doing is based on passion. I'm not doing it based on profit. I'm not doing it based on self-praise. That is why most of the things I've done is not known to many people. Because I wasn't doing it out of, I want people to know me. I want to, uh, because if people don't know me, I would have stopped doing it. I was doing it basically because I have passion for it. Even if you don't say thank you. Sometimes we do things, I would say, please don't say thank you, just go. You know, passion is key to sustaining it. Mm. If the reason for doing it is not based on your passion, believe me, you are going to give up. We have many NGOs, we have many people who started this and they gave up along the line because of what is the fundamental reason for doing it. Why are they doing it? Are they doing it for self-praise? Are they doing it for social media praise? Are they doing it for political reasons? For us, it was based on passion. We never wanted any reward. And two, what also sustains social impact is you must have a means of livelihood, you, yourself. Have a means of income. Mm -hmm. Any NGO that is in Africa, if an NGO or your social impact project is based on funding from people, it might not, it might not, um, it might not be sustainable. That is why I've seen a lot of people who have NGO in Nigeria. I mentor a lot of them who come. Oh, I started an NGO, and now I'm very poor. I use all my all my money to help people. Now I don't have money. No, 
before you can pull anybody, you have to be safe yourself. Mm. You know, I'm also a safety expert. Before you can help a victim, you must be safe yourself. You must consider yourself. Even in the plane, you know, they ask you before you can, you use the nose, the oxygen mask for yourself first before you apply it on others. So you must be in the position whereby you are safe. Very, very important. So you have to look at it. Where is the funding coming from? How much from your profit are you budgeting for social impact projects? You must have, okay, it's 10% we are giving every year. So you know it's very sustainable. Thirdly, there are some social impact projects that also bring back revenue indirectly. So you must be able to design a system to know that, okay, we are giving back to the society, but it's coming back to us. This, there's, there's a lot of social impact that is bringing back in another way. For example, if a bank wants to, um, wants to, wants to, wants to, wants to um, maybe support a social project, <laughs> what they do is they will say, okay, we need 1,000 people here. Though we are giving out this to the school, but we know that your student is going to have an account with us. So, for example, like what I said, we are giving out this to your school, but we know that your students are going to register to have an account with us. Mm. So you can see the give and take arrangement. They are helping, but in another way, what they are, the help they are giving is also giving back to them. In that way, it becomes sustainable. So I will just stop at this three. Number one is passion. Mm -hmm. Number two is um, number one is passion. Um, number two is um, what I say. What what is number two? And number three is making sure that you design a system to, to a give and take system. Mm. Yes, Thank and number you. two is budgeting a part of your profits to run. Mm. I think those are the three. Yes, those, those are the three you mentioned. Hello, Prof. Um, your screen is frozen. I think um, Prof is having network issues let's hope that this you know is one of the problems is going to help us resolve <laughs> the issue of network okay um we have to had prof again thank you for your patience um Sorry, I mean, network. The conversation was getting so interesting, and then network as usual happened to us. So let's uh, give it some few minutes. I want to believe that Prof is also trying to join from his hand. But thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Yes, it should be. Yes, uh, he's back with us. Yes. Okay. Right. Yes, I said um, Nigeria just happened to us, and that I hope this network issue is going to be one of the things you tackle if, of course, you become president in 2023. Of course. So, thank you for the insights you shared with us. Now, to the main question what would you do differently if you become president in 2023? Okay, number one, um, I can tell you that there is no topic, there is no area of the economy that I don't have vast knowledge on. Mm. I'm telling you, I'm not saying this out of, I'm one engineer that God blessed with so much knowledge. And not just so much knowledge, so much practical application to knowing how to solve problems. For example, we're talking about ASU problem. ASU, ASU problem is not a problem. It's not a problem. Nigeria should not be at home now for because of um, government cannot. And the reason is because um, we have appointed men without value mm. who do not value the people who do not value the system to run the, to 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 handle the affairs of Nigeria. Mm. First thing I'm going to do is to appoint a credible team of people mm -hmm. who has value, who has shown that in their mm -hmm. antecedents to solving problems. Mm -hmm. You know the way we appoint political people to support us is through political parties. Mm -hmm. So those who have helped me, oh, you help me, come, come and become the minister of. Mm -hmm. This you you were this come and become the minister of this. You see, a man in Nigeria is the woman leader. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. The man is appointed as Minister of Women. You say, oh, mm. yes, because you know, they start giving justification for it. I'm mm. going to appoint a credible team. It's called selection for election. Those who have mm -hmm. shown, yes, those who have the heart. A particular mm -hmm. TV physician was asking me, he said, Prof, how do you intend to stop the ASU problem? I said, ASU problem is not a problem. It's about value. It's a value problem. If you value the life of Nigerians, you will not allow Nigerians to stay at home. It's not about we are going to create funding. It's not about we are going to digitalize education. It's not about we are going to use it that we are going to use it that you tax or this payment system. It's about okay. value. If an armed robber comes into your house and points a gun to your son or your child, and he says, "Give me that money, or I take your child," if you mm -hmm. have the money, would you give? Because you value the life of your child. Mm -hmm. So, if Nigerians who are appointed to oversee a particular region have value for its people. You know, we now have leaders who don't have value for his people. Mm -hmm. We now have, um, look at the way life is being taken. Even people, if we, are, we now live in a country where even if one million people die tomorrow, no world leader will send us condolence letter. Because our war is politicized. We do not have value for ourselves. Look at what happened at um, Houston the other time. Just people died. Now, we're not even calling few people. Few, we, not, we are even used to it that if 10 people die, we say, it's just 10. Imagine the value. So we are going to appoint people with value first, very important. Then we are going to tackle, look at my manifesto. We are going to tackle security issue. We are going to ensure that we run a digital economy. How do we run analog in 21st century? You know, even in Nigeria, you know, a, a, a foreigner can pick a passport in Nigeria. In another part of the world, if you get an American passport, you jubilate, it can take you 10 years. In Nigeria, go to our offices, our federal agencies. They pile up books everywhere. They don't even know how to use computers, so many of them. Digital world, we have to digitalize the economy. Once we digitalize the economy by itself, corruption will die. Corruption cannot, cannot strive in a controlled environment. The reason why we have corruption in Nigeria is because we have so many human involvement. You want to do something, you need to go through 10 persons. Before you get to the 10th person, you would have... Guys, any system that has so many human inputs... Corruption mm -hmm. will strive so well. So we're going to cut down all those things. Mm -hmm. Have a digitalized economy. Nigeria should start having social security number. But how do we fight security when we don't know how many we are in Nigeria? We don't have personal identity. We don't know. People can walk into a shop and just buy some. Nobody knows them. We must digitalize the economy. And I have those knowledge. I'm a digital professor. When you see me, you thought I was going to have white hair. I will have like all those. <laughs> I have so much knowledge. But I'm a professor that is not that. No. So that is it. We digitalize the economy. That will fight a lot of things. Then electricity. Mm -hmm. There is still one country that... You see, so we still have problems with electricity. Countries like Togo. Do you know what? When you have electricity in your country, you can run a 24-hour economy. Electricity, constant electricity by itself, can double your employment opportunities. Because now Nigerians work two, have two jobs. They work in the morning and they work at night. You know, government is not should not be in the in should not be in the in the in the in the in the field of running business. You only create that environment for business to strive. Nigerians are good people. Nigerians know how to how to make wealth. All they need is just to create that environment for them. Youth empowerment is key. We have the we have the, the, the most tenacious youth all over the world. Look at what our young ones are doing. Those ones that are into crime are doing it because there is no... Even those look at our music industry. Look at, look at our young Nigerians doing exploits all over the world. Oh. And let me tell you, do you know that Nigerians in diaspora... Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you... Nigerians in diaspora has a lot to do when it comes to developing Nigeria itself. Mm. Why? Because of the exposure these ones have gotten. You have mm -hmm. the knowledge. So if you notice, Nigeria doesn't have a link with Nigerians in diaspora. We do not have support project for Nigerians in diaspora. Look at what's happening in China. China have a specific fund that is meant for Chinese in diaspora. You know what they tell them? Go outside in China, look for projects. Any project you see outside China, we are going to fund it in China. And that's why a Chinese man can come into Nigeria and start building train without asking Nigerian government to pay. They go back to their country. They get loan and they come and construct that train. We have over 250 million people. In 2050, Nigeria will become a 1 billion population. What is our plan for Nigerians that will be moving out into diaspora? 
Do you know that Nigerians have been traveling outside Nigeria even before China exploded? We've been having Yibos. Tell me one country that we don't have Nigerians. We have. So, see, we have, we just need a leader who can sit down and articulate the Nigerian problem. That's what we're going to be doing. The whole world will begin to know that something new is happening in this country. You know, the sleeping giant will suddenly rise and the world will shout. What is happening? Because we have all it takes. The human capacity, the resources. Do you know we have, we still have over 4,000 natural resources that is yet unexplored in Nigeria. Every state can be financially independent if federal government can help states to identify the resources they have help them to trade it international market, they will generate a lot of money. We have GIS, we have, we have what's it called, satellite system that can be built. We don't even have satellites in Nigeria. The only two satellites we have in space have expired. Imagine. And we have one, there's a, if just Elon Musk own a company that acts, that have over 4,000 satellites, just one person. And a country like Nigeria do not have satellites. How do we fight security? How do we know what's happening? So you can see a Chinese man in China we use their digital system to know what you have in Ogbomosho. And it's going to come into Ogbomosho and start digging gold. And you say, how did he know? These are, tele these are technology. You don't, we are going to an age where you don't need to dig before you know the resources that you have, the capacity, the economic, val uh, the economic value, and the rest of them. You can know yeah. through a digital analysis. So, yeah. hey, so we, we, what we are bringing to Nigeria is sincerity. What we are bringing yeah. to Nigeria is the knowledge to make things work, the will to make things work. Yeah. Is to fix Nigeria to fix. Okay, I talk about electricity. We know the problem in electricity. To solve Nigeria problem in electricity is just to open up that industry. You do not monopolize a sector that will bet national development. Mm -hmm. How do you monopolize electricity and just have few people run it? And this is because of politics. We know how to solve it. We need to bring investors in. We need to diversify into green energy investment that we emit low carbon emissions, zero carbon emission, in line with UNFCC carbon, um, carbon exchange co convention. We understand these things. So we must run this company. We need an eligible president. I can tell you all these people that are shouting out there, oh, this president, let us debate. Let us talk about national eco um, the economy. How do we grow this country? Knowledge-wise, I'm young, but you'll be amazed at the kind of knowledge that God has helped us with. So mm -hmm. some of these things are many more we will be doing to stabilize Nigeria and bring back Nigeria into the map of prosperous nation in the world. Thank you very much. So if you want to streamline everything you've said now, what are your top three agendas if you become president in 2023? Just the top three agendas. One, digitalization of the economy. Okay. Security. Digitalization mm. of the economy, security, mm -hmm. and electricity. But there is no, there is no top. Those are number number one and three. But Nigeria as it is now, we have over two hundred problems that need to be tackled at the same time. I'm mm. telling you, yeah, because if you solve one without solving another, you will be pulling down the one you are solving. Mm. So we must tackle these things together. Revamping mm. of all the abandoned projects. We have over 60,000 abandoned projects. Do you know Nigeria does not have a steel capacity? That does not have a steel generation capacity. We don't have any industry that manufactures. Any country that, that cannot manufacture steel is dead on arrival. How do we become a productive economy where we cannot produce our own steel? And we have Itakwe steel. We have Ajakuta steel. These are multi-billion projects that have been left abandoned because of political reasons. An incoming government will say, I don't want to touch it because the glory will not come to me. Because mm. I didn't start it. Why must we talk like that? We don't need to start it. In as much as it's going to bet growth in the country, let's fix it. So I must, one of them, I'm going to visit all the abandoned projects. projects. We have refinery that is not working. The mm. worry refinery has a lot of capacity, is not functioning. The Cardinal mm. refinery is not functioning. The element refinery is not functioning I'm, optimally. We have recruit, though, yet we cannot refine our crude. We have so many abandoned projects here and there. We have to identify them and fix all of them. Now we have to rebrand the Nigerian name so that Nigerians can be proud of Nigeria itself. We have to mm -hmm. weaponize Nigeria. We have to create a social, social plan for our women, our old age, those who have served our country. Do you know the reason why many persons can never believe in Nigeria is because they've seen, our, they've seen their father who served this country and 
they died poor. They died unrewarded. Then why do you want the youth to be patriotic to the country? Patriotism comes with benefits. If people don't benefit in the system, they can never be patriotic to that system. We are going to build back patriotism for Nigerians. You know, when people travel all over the world, you see Nigerians in the, in the um, in airports. Once they gather, they start talking bad about Nigeria. Do you know this news about bad Nigeria is propagated by Nigeria ourselves? Because we don't believe, we talk bad too, we talk too much. When I travel over the world, I see Nigeria gather in the airport and they talk about, it's only Nigeria you see do that thing. People don't, check people from India, they don't talk bad about that country. People from UK, they don't. But Nigerians in the airport, once they're up to five, their topic is about Nigeria. And we are going back to Nigeria. Is there light there? You know, why are we doing this? Because Nigerians have not seen a huge benefit or the impact of Nigeria to themselves. In Nigeria, we only exist, we don't live. And to exist is just to have the gift of God. But to live is to have things that are provided for government, for comfort, good roads, light, water, basic amenities. We still struggle to enjoy basic amenities. How then can we start thinking about going to space? How then can we start thinking about doing things that are done by... We, we don't even have global competition. We cannot compete globally. Look at what, what has happened to our dollar. Our foreign reserve is down to zero. For the first time, Nera to dollar is about 620. What is happening? I can tell you why it's like that. We live in a consum consumptive economy where we consume everything. We buy everything abroad. It stress our national reserve, our dollar reserve, and it keeps going up. There are things we can do. We, don't, we understand all these things. So we're going to be touching on virtually education, employment. We're going to be touching on infrastructural development. We're okay. going to be touching on... I'm not going to talk about corruption because I know that once you digitalize the economy... Okay. Yeah. okay, here we go again with the next walk issue. <laughs> exactly what Prof was just saying. Please. Okay, let's hope that um, he's able to join us again. Thank you, everyone, for joining. I think it's the network. Yes, it's obviously the network. Yes, you're net back with us. The network. Yes. I mean, this is one issue you just have to tackle when you become president. You know, mm -hmm. if you become president, you need because. Oh, like you said, we, we, we've been through, you know, to other countries. We've seen yeah. when people have this digital session, this virtual session, you yeah. don't have network issues. You don't have these glitches happening. But anyway, thank you so much for the last point that you made. There are a couple of people who want to ask you questions. So I'll just quickly take questions for we have a few minutes from like two of them. Olumide Glowview, um, Olumide Lawrence, I uh, would like to ask you a question. He is a social media influencer, very well known on Facebook and across social media. He's a okay. content creator as well. Um, Olumide, please, can you request to join and then you can ask Prof your question. If there's anyone else who wants to ask a question, please, we can take a few questions. Keep it respectful and civilized. In the meantime, Prof, what would you say to a young person right now who wants to go into politics? Let's all go. Let's go into politics. Let me say this. Nigeria can only, only be great when young mm. people come into politics. Mm. By the side, mm. those mm -hmm. who have our country were young persons. Mm -hmm. Those who fought mm -hmm. for independence, fought for independence at the age of 20 and early 30s. Gowan mm -hmm. was the president when he was a bachelor. He, he got married as mm. an head of state. Um, Awolo mm. was 29. Obasanjo was 32. Mm -hmm. Amadou Bello, all of them were in their early 30s. And they, 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 they built this country. But these persons mm -hmm. were allowed to run Nigeria for more than 50 years, 60 years. And they ran mm -hmm. out of ideas. Do you know that? Even when you run a company for more than 20 years, you start running out of ideas. What you do then is to engage young minds coming with fresh ideas. So, yeah. I'm sorry. So, what you do is to bring in young minds who will come in with mm -hmm. fresh ideas to run your organization mm -hmm. for you. Those who are mm -hmm. currently running the affairs of Nigeria, uh, they have run out of ideas. They are not in mm -hmm. tune with reality on ground, and they don't know. You don't know. Mm -hmm. They are not aware. So 
So young persons with fresh ideas. I know the challenge mm -hmm. is we don't have funds. The challenge is um, people will not believe in us. Start it. The journey of a thousand miles starts in one day. Start it. Absolutely. You say yeah. That is not the end. Failure is gain. Failure, yeah. there's experience in it. Yeah. So the young persons must learn. We, there's something we can learn from these old for old ones. They have tenacity, political tenacity. They can try yeah. again and again and again until they get it. We young ones, we are, we are, we, we are, we want to be quick at getting it, you know. And they have strength. You see them moving from one place to another. Somebody's asking, said structure. I want you to know that go and check Unique Foundation. They have been on for for over, 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 over twelve years. I have built, I have built over seven million followers. Global <laughs> wealth. I'm the president of Global Wealth. I have built over four hundred fifty thousand members. We have 176,000 polling units in Nigeria. As I'm speaking to you now, we have covered half of them. I don't need to be shouting. Oh, I don't need to be... See, politics is not won by the most popular person. Yes, you need to be popular. But it is won by the most strategic politician. Mm. By the, so we are looking at that. We have nine months to... We have nine months to election. This is the longest election ever in the history of Nigeria. Many people don't follow... They don't follow history and know what happened. This is, the, this is the only election that you have nine months from Palmaris to the election. Since 1999, all the elections that we've been having is three months after Palmaris. So mm -hmm. if you run too fast, you will wear off before December. So for politicians like top politicians who have saved a lot of money, they can start running and jumping everywhere. But for us, this is a mar marathon campaign. Slow and steady will win the race. Thank you, Prof. I'll just allow... Olumide to ask his question. Please, Olumide, you may have the floor now. All right. Good evening, everyone. Please confirm that you can hear me. Yes, we can hear you loud and clear. Awesome. Good evening, sir. It's a great pleasure to uh, listen to you um, this evening. I like your tenacity, just like you mentioned. Um, I like I like your conviction. I like I like how you you know put out your point forward, and you really sound like a, a president already. I, I should I should say, and um, I really want to appreciate you also for taking this very bold step because I, I think it's not it's not an easy it's not an easy feat for someone to just wake up one morning and say, I want to become president of Nigeria. Right? It takes it takes conviction. It takes bravery. It takes courage. It takes a lot. And I appreciate you for that. I think it's inspiring to see someone like you, you know, taking um, this heads on. So my question is very simple, actually. Um, I, I think to, it takes a lot to become the president of Nigeria. It's, it's not just about, you know, what you're able to, to, to say in terms of your will, in terms of your manifesto. I, I think there is a lot of um, politicking involved. There is a lot of... Um, relationship building involved management and traveling around the country you know you should have some popularity you should have some social currency that you can leverage on and um not not to um take away anything from who you are what you have done before now right um up until when you know i i, I followed um, madam esther i didn't know about you right and i'm pretty sure more than you know more than 180 million nigerians probably right now do not know you that well and um you will not be the first person who is coming out to to say oh i have to run for presidency who up until that moment we did not know about and they still went ahead and ran and then we just noticed that after running they just pretty much fade off again. We don't, we don't seem to hear about them again. And then you start to wonder, why did this person even come up in the first place, right? What, what, was, what was the goal for them? And that's my question to you. Because, um, you know, not to take anything away from you, like I said before, um, you know, what exactly was, what, what do you have in mind, you know, coming forward at this time? Um, given, you know, what you have done in the past, which is magnificent anyways, I've, I've, I've had time to read about you and I think you, you really have done a lot for yourself. And, you know, I can't, I can't be the one to advise you on what to do, right? But I, I would have really loved that you took some time to build your, 
political uh, pedigree, or should I call it political timeline, or foot, footprint, maybe starting from somewhere where you can gain some influence before saying you want to have national influence. Maybe you want to start from a local influence, regional influence, and then maybe you know federal influence before you now say national influence. So I wanted to ask, why are you starting from the top when you know there is a lot of chance you know below that i just want to know your conviction really thank you sir yes and thank you thank you for, for that question i've received this question a lot from nigeria you know um i'm already on top of my game yes at this young age like where i'm coming from i'm the first nigeria to have three universities and um, people would have said it's not possible I'm the only Nigerian whose, whose name is in the World Book of Greatness in UK. You can check that out. And, um, and um, um, I'm already at the top of my game. And I'm doing this because I want to solve a problem nationally, which I've been doing. Is there any Nigerian in Nigeria today who have given 500,000 Nigerian scholarship? I think I'm the only one. I'm not trying to blow my trumpet. I've done a lot of things. And the only reason why people don't know about this is this. Because I never initially had a plan for politics. If I initially had a plan for politics, I would have been blowing those things by now. Everybody would have known me from that angle. I never. I'm going into politics because of a genuine mindset to solving a problem that is already a time bomb. It's not even a time bomb. Nigeria is drained. Nigeria is knows that. Nigeria is having a lot of problems. And if we must look at someone who would solve this, to me, I have what it takes. And I believe it's someone that is coming outside the political system. See, my concern is that it's not really about knowing me. It's about building 40 million population. 40 million voters across the 176,000 polling units. I want to build it the same way I build my organization. Today, I have, I have, you know, I have a school, 200 schools in Nigeria. Nobody would even know. I have in Togo, I have in Ghana, a young person like me who have, have checked my activities. So now, but let me say this. You can also compare my fame to other political, like someone like, let me just call him. I'm not calling, I respect them all. Because I told myself that I'm going to engage in positive campaign. I'm not going to engage in cursing people, calling people name, positive campaign. Meaning that I look at the problem, I talk about how I'm going to solve it, and I start solving it even in my campaign season. See, all my campaign promises, I'm going to start the solution now, not because when, not when I get to president, because I've been doing it. So if you look at people like Atiku, for example, Atiku, for example, it was 1993. 1993, where was I? I was not. I was. In, I was still in secondary school. So, it was he ran with MKO under SDP. These people have been there for more than 40 years. How many years? You cannot just one day wake up. People like uh, look at um, at Tinubu. Tinubu has been senator in 1990 something. Obi Obi was a governor. Obi was a vice president. He ran as a vice president. So they, you cannot just. There is no political. There is no. In, there's no new person that will come up for the first time and have the same political um, fame, um, influence or as in popularity that they have because they have been there for many years. But having said that, does it now mean that someone cannot come in and run them off? Is don't now Nigerians? Let's look at the political understanding. Nigerians, yes, seems to be tired of these old ones. Everybody is saying that we need a new face. Now, we're having a new face. We are still complaining that, oh, you're too new. Why can't you go and start from local government? And there's this thing about politics. If you want to start, if you want to go into politics, and you have, you have the aim of sustaining or maintaining your name, and you want to solve a problem, start from where you want to start. Because by the time you become a senator, believe me, the system is so corrupt that even you, your name would have been stained. You will not get to where you're going to. I want to become a president to solve the Nigerian problem. I'm already at the top of my game. I'm going to start as the president. I'm not going to be the first person in the world that will contest for president as the first time and become a president. And again, my structure. As I speak to you, check what I don't need. So weakness is one of my strategy to look weak. As I speak to you, eh, I to, if we go into the election now, I'm sure of millions of votes. All Nigerians don't need to know me. I just need the 20 million people that vote for me to know me and vote for me. And I can do that. That is the problem. To make popularity is not my... I can be popular. If I want to be popular on social media, if I spend... How much will I spend? Everybody will know me in two seconds. That is not my agenda. 
I have my political strategy. It might be different from other person's political strategy. But I should know what I want to do and how to achieve it. Having said that, of course, um, that doesn't mean that you, what you have said is not what you have said are valid points, which are things that a lot of persons have asked me. Chris, you want to, why don't you start from um, um, being a senator? I'm not going into politics because I want to become a politician. I'm going into politics because I want to solve a national problem. And the position of presidency will give me the opportunity to do so. Thank you. Thank you very much, Olumide, for the question. Yeah. Did thank, he thank, answer your uh, question? Just before, yeah, just before I, I pass on the mic back to um, Madam Esther, please pardon me. One, mm -hmm. one more question. Yeah, I, okay. I, like the fact, I like how you've been able to, you know, um, respond to the question. I think it, um, it has clarified a number of things. And one important thing that you said, which I think I would even adapt in my own personal life is, you know, if you want to start something, if you want to do something, just, you know, come out with your intentions where you really want to do it straight. There's no need dilly dallying and then trying to play, you know, all of that. And I think that's very, very important. Yet, right, um, I, I respect your will so much and I think it is, it is what everybody should emulate, right? Do you think that um, solving Nigeria's problems you know, or restoring Nigeria to where we really desire that it should be is a one-man plan. Do you think all we need is one president, right? Looking at the political structure of Nigeria, we are in a democratic system whereby there are checks and balances everywhere. And even within the government, politics is at play. And it is party politics, as it were. We are talking of the Senate where there is majority from a party, majority from another party. Before, you know, a bill can be passed, you know, it has to favor a number of people. It has to be put to a vote. And then when, you know, they think that the president is not in their favor, they can vote against you. And, you know, there is, there is no veto power and all of that. So how do you think, you know, all of this can play out, especially when, you're coming from a political party where, you know, you don't have a lot of, you probably may not have a lot of allies in the House of Reps or at the Senate level, you know, and you still have to make things work across all 36 states. Policy making here and there, you know, changing this and that, whereby it has to go through a, a lot of bureaucratic processes. Do you, how do you estimate or how would you rate the importance of working as a group as, as against wanting to be the president whereby you think from that position you can actually make real changes that will affect the common man. I'd like to hear your view on that. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you so much. Um, if you heard me clearly when I said, when you asked me what are the things I'm going to do differently, I think the first thing I mentioned was raising a team. That was the first thing I mentioned because I know that Nigeria problem cannot be solved by one person, but by a group of people that have same ideology. It's very, very important. But again, you must understand that the position of president in Nigeria is a very powerful position. It's very by someone who has the wisdom and who understands how to play the game. I have good interrelationship skills. I have I've been so opportune to work with a lot of groups. For example, let me give you an example. I presently oversee Unique Foundation, Global Wealth System, and JPTS. JPTS Institute has the highest number of students in Africa. Today we have, okay, no, no highest, above National Open University. Today we have over 120,000 students. I'm telling you. One Global Wealth System has 450,000 members. Unique Foundation has over 6 million members. And I'm the president of this group. So if you look at even some countries in Africa, don't have up to 10 million population. So if I'm overseeing a group of about, let's say, 8 million people already, I'm already a president in a corner of myself. People that listen to me. Okay. I think the network happened again. These are the issues. These are the issues. <laughs> I think it's the network, you know. Yeah, okay, yeah. let's... Let's hope that um is he, is he in Nigeria? Yes, he is. Yes, he is. So, Nigeria too, so maybe... <laughs> let's hope that um he's able to connect with us and 
conclude oh yeah we lost them um going to come back because i want him to finish that interesting question you asked me yes. i'm sure there are a couple of people who also need answers to that exactly i i hope he's able to to you know provide clarity because i i think the way um politics is is played in nigeria is is very very um i don't know how to for, for a lack of better word very dirty mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. where you yeah. have to lobby you have mm -hmm. to you know play power games and all mm -hmm. of that and we, we mm -hmm. read about these things in the news all the time mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. why it almost makes perfect sense to run under a party that is already popular and you can easily you know there, there was one thing that i was telling a colleague of mine at work on thursday right i was saying to save nigeria if we really mm -hmm. say we save nigeria it is a 20-year project mm -hmm. it's not something that you know you're waiting for the next election and then you are saying i want to run and then you you run and then you win and then you think you can save nigeria because mm -hmm. For your policies, for your ideas, for all your manifesto, everything to work, you need everybody at every corner to agree with you. Right from even the gate man at Asso Rock. Yeah. Right? You need people to... Because you are going to have people sabotaging you. And you are going to... You are going to need people who are going to fight for you, who are going to defend your policies. Mm -hmm. You're going to need people who will enforce your policy. You need people who would, at the judiciary level, ensure that your policy is law. Right? So, and that is why, you know, I, I'm not very quick to, to even attack any president because I have studied our political structure. The president is only as strong as his name. Right? Oh, the, Mr. President is coming. Everybody, we are calm down, everybody. But when it comes to really wielding that power, the way we have divided powers, the, stru the power structure in Nigeria political system has shown that at some level, even the Senate can be the uh -huh. principalities of their own against the president when, you know, they are not working in tandem. Right? So that is why I feel like, you know, if we are going to save Nigeria, it, it has to be coming together of a group of people, say 200 of them, and then they are gradually working themselves into the political system such okay. that they are in strategic positions to with one ideology, yeah. right? And I always believe it's that to win Nigerians, to win the art of Nigerians, you need to show a proof of concept. Proof of concept is like, to give you an example, how did APC come into power? As far as yeah. I'm Mm. APC came into power because Nigerians were tired of PDP. Mm. And at that, point, at that point, we were modeling the, the, the perceived uh, messiah of Nigeria from what a few APC governors had done in their states. Talking mm -hmm. of La and I think two other states. Because we're looking at, oh, if APC can do this in these states, then they can do it at federal level. And then APC has come. Now we're looking at PDP now because of what somebody like Shei Makinde and a few other governors have done. And I'm okay. saying that if we're going to really take over Nigeria, we have to start from these small portions, small pockets of success stories. So that those <laughs> success stories build, you know, they cannot become a cluster to now say, okay, I trust these guys. I've seen them do something before and I can trust them to do it at a national level. So that, that's my own personal belief. It may not always work like that, or I believe it's going to take considered effort for it to work. But then I'll be, I'll be very glad to hear what Mr. Chris has to say about you know, his, his, his plan to, to make this work out. Thank you. Prof, please um, continue. We were cut off again. All thanks Sorry. to the network. Oh, it's, it's fine. Let's hope that when you become president, you resolve this, um, this yeah. issue of network please you have the floor sir okay first and foremost um i want us to take it easy the solution to nigeria problem is not rocket science you know they've made it look as if 
we have to, it's a complex problem. We have to think deep. The deeper we think, the lesser we would understand how to solve it. It's a very simple problem. Okay. Let's work again. Let's work again. This is, um, let's hope that he's able to join us. Okay. Yes, you are back. Thank God. Sorry. <laughs> don't know what is, what is happening. It's it's very... Okay. We are going to finish this session by, by God's grace. <laughs> Amen. So now, um, they've made it look as if the problem is a very complicated problem. No. A president that has the right spirit, the right mind, the right body language, who is ready to do the right thing, solves 50% of the fall of the Nigerian problem. If you if you would um if you would attest to this, people eventually wanted Buhari because we felt that okay, in nineteen eighty three, this man is a disciplinarian and what we needed is someone that can fight corruption. His first tenure, you know, um when he came in. First two months when the new president came in, everybody was sitting up that this man is a tough man, everybody must do the right thing. He said, even electricity, we're having light, like, but when people saw that, ah, it's like things have changed. Everybody went back to normal. A president with the right body language, who is truthful, who is transparent, who wants the right thing to be done in Nigeria, I'm telling you, has a lot of power to solving it. And let me say this quickly. There's so many reasons why some persons will come into power and they cannot do the right thing. I would explain. That is deep. I understand these things. See, in my journey of wanting to become president, I've seen a lot. We've not even started. Do you know that Nigeria have been sold and have been pocketed by a group of people? Do you know that this group of people are the same people that held Nigeria strong band? That even if you want to become president, they might even be the one to determine if you become a president. Do you know that you can even sign a contract with them to become a president? And when you become a president, the problem you want to solve is the same contract you signed that you cannot solve. See, the person that will solve our problem is a man who God will just put in by the people. Who will not sign any contract to further... See, you might have the heart to want to solve a problem. But the highlight you work with, who signed you in? See, there's a lot. There's, this is just a public forum. But one thing that I want to do is to apply wisdom. Those who have held Nigerian ban, we're not going to fight war. What we're going to do is to talk with them. It's high time you set Nigeria free. Let's talk together. Let's have a dialogue. Because some of them are stronger than Nigeria. Some of them control more military than this country. Look, let me tell you something. The, the war that happened in Ukraine is largely because of the inexperience of the leader himself. Yes, you want to fight something, you must fight it with wisdom so that the lack populace will not suffer. I'm telling you. So we are going to apply that wisdom. We have it. God has given it to us to set Nigeria free. Yet we'll do the right thing. I just told you about power sector. Do you know what is happening in the power sector? Do you know the people controlling that sector? <laughs> so it's a lot. I understand this deeply. And this opportunity we have, we are going to work with it. I've not saw in my hand. I've never collected a contract from Nigeria. I built my company by personal effort and grace of God. If someone like me have the have that power opportunity, I'm telling you, <laughs> I don't I don't want to say so much because I'm not I'm and see this is just the right time for us not to be deluded by people who has a media um, influence who are who will create a narrative by themselves. Nigeria should research and look deep, look into the people that want to become a president, look at the antecedents. If I can give 500,000 Nigerian scholarship with my own fund, do you think mm -hmm. education will not be free for all Nigerians? If I can help with those, you will say people have done it. This, many people that have done it did it with political money. Many of these people, you say, oh, they, have, they have done similar things. What were they doing before, before they came into politics? Did any of, this, any of them check their record at my age? Personal, and I told you I was doing this out of passion. I don't, I shouldn't be the one talking for myself. People should be the one talking. Because if I start talking about this, <laughs> I'm seeing your friend. We already, we already thinking. We he's talking. But we have to at, at the time. We have to start talking about this so that Nigeria can begin to see the real person they should go for. It's beyond hype. It's beyond um, packaging. It's mm -hmm. being truthful. And you can only get that. Do a study. But it's unfortunate that our educational system has not really helped a lot of Nigerians. Do you know that the Nigerian mental strength 
I'm trying to say this. Many Nigerians do not really know what they want. That is why we can be watching football and Okota will mess up and maybe five minutes to the end of the football, Okota, Okota will dribble like two persons and everybody will forget the wrong that Okota did and start healing him. This same class of politician now, when it's, when it's January, they'll start fixing road. They'll make sure that dollar drop from 600 to 550. All Nigeria will forget about the three years suffering they have done. You know why? Because a damaged educational system will also damage the mind of Nigerians. We will not have a fully formed mind to take effective decision in a way to select the best leaders for ourselves. Maybe that is why they intentionally have destroyed the educational system. Our syllabus does not have history to teach Nigerians their history to know their heroes. Sometimes you go to the southeast, you see south. Let's walk again. Yeah. Okay, I, I think we have yeah, to wrap up here a bit. Thank you so, so the much. Is okay. Yeah, yeah the reason is simple. Someone else asked Nigeria question. to know more. We need to know more. We need to know more and do more. Yeah, so Thank let me you. just stop at this. Yeah. Thank you, Prof. You know, just because of time, I'd like um, someone else to, you know, come on. And this will be the last question for the session. Um, Fakers. Okay, I think he said he doesn't want to come live. So I'll take Shudipo. If you're there, can they show Shudipo, please? You have the floor. Ask your question. Okay. Guess um he's not able to join. I'll ask him to join again. Thank you so much, Prof. All right. I think a couple of people will want to ask these questions are not online again, perhaps because of network. Um, we might have to wrap up the session right now. If you have any questions though, please, all right. I think someone else is joining us. Hi, hi. Hello. Hello. Oh, you did a baby that wants to ask us a question. <laughs> Do you want to ask us to? Please, can you ask a question? Oh, okay. Okay, I have to. Oh, sorry. All right. Please ask. I don't know why. <laughs> the person was mute. We can only hear your baby. Can you please ask your question now? Because we want to take a question from one more person and then we end the session. Okay. Someone said the baby pressed it. Okay. All right. Uh, Prof, I think we need to end the session now. Please, we just need some words from you to, you know, the youth people who have come out today to listen to you. What are your last words to them? You know, what would you like to tell them in view of your ambition to become the president? Why should we vote for you come 2023 as the president of Nigeria? Yeah, it's simple. Um, first and foremost, Nigerian youth need to be motivated. Nigerian youth need to be rewarded. Nigerian youth need to be encouraged. And if there's one man who understands the youth, who understands the mindset of the youth, who by himself is, is a young man, I'm the youngest among all the presidential aspirants. And mm. maybe I'm also prosperous. I'm forward thinking. Nigerian youth can mm. change the narrative for this country. If there's one person who will come in and solve this problem, who have the might, the will, who doesn't care, who is ready to sacrifice all, to see that our children live a better tomorrow, I'm the one. Mm. I'm not doing this because I want to enrich myself. God has blessed me with what I have. I've been using my personal resources to also bless life. The reason for politics is this. If you can help and bless millions of lives, then politics should give mm. more advantage to bless mm -hmm. more lives. Politics should mm. be an advantage to touch more life. So we are limited. We can do so much. Nigerians are suffering. Our mothers, our fathers are suffering. Many of them who have worked sincerely for this country have too many of them have died. Those who are living are suffering. Our children are not in school. Those who are in school have been terrorized. We cannot go to farm. We cannot go to work. There's no security. There's no power. There's nothing. Tell me one single mm -hmm. sector in Nigeria that is 90 percent efficient. Nigeria is only partnering on the on the struggle of individual Nigerian populists, not the government. 
government mm. is supposed to be the supportive factor for Nigeria, but they have become the the rope drawing us backward. Mm. You know, sometimes mm. when we pray to when we pray to God and say we cast that we cast out demon, to me sometimes I think the, the government himself is the demon because mm. they are not supporting; they are dragging us back. So we need a government that will push us, that will become a catalyst to our destiny. We have one mm. life to live, and we need a we need a leader that can help us achieve our destiny. A leader that will give mm. us good, good, good housing that will make our children, our, ourselves, live in peace. That is what we are going to bring. Nigerians mm. will again be happy to become a Nigerian. Even those in diaspora can truly come out and say, "I'm a Nigerian." Because many of you will say, "I'm African." You don't even want to call Nigerians. Say, "Where are you from?" You say, "I'm African." No, you will be again to, you will be proud again to say, "I'm." And when you say you're Nigerian, every part of the world look at you and say, "Wow, wow, you are, you are, you are lucky to be a Nigerian." Yes. Our dignity will come back. We'll be patriotic to this nation. This should happen in our own time, not when we are dead. Our mm. father lived to see this great Nigeria. Many of them are dead and long gone. They didn't see it. All these mm. politicians cannot give us. I'm saying this. We all know the truth. We are only looking for the, the, the best among the worst. But I have what it takes. I have the heart. I'm empathetic. I'm sympathetic. I, I, I see government as a charitable mission, not a business. And once we see that, we'll be able to help ourselves. We'll be able to care for ourselves. Look at what happened in our world. Children were killed in the church. Where is the value for life? We need a leader who understands this. And by the grace of God, I have these things. And I want Nigerians to support me. Let them come out in mass. Let them talk to themselves. We will start engaging Nigerians from local government, from state to state in coming months. Once you see us, let us work together and make this country a great place. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, I think one of my greatest take home today is the fact that you said you are not going to run an aggressive campaign. You are not going to throw people under the bus to score your point. And I honestly feel we should get to that point where everybody can have the floor without anyone trying to push you know, and, you know, any other person away. So. Thank you very much for your time and for the scholarship that you have for those who are at home right now. Where can they access the portal? Okay. To, yes. What they need to do is just to send yes on WhatsApp. They will send yes on WhatsApp to 081-327-33378. Just send yes on WhatsApp, not SMS. Send yes on WhatsApp to mm -hmm. 081 327-333-78. Send yes on WhatsApp to 081-327-333-78. So I think in our in our next episode, I don't know if um, I, I know I'm going to have time. I also want to start using this opportunity to giving out empowerment to a lot of people because, like I said, I'm not going to wait. I'm not. I've not been. I've not been waiting to become a president to help. Mm -hmm. Even in our campaign season, we want to see how we can reduce the price of bag of rice to <laughs> crash it down so that Nigerians can have access in our campaign junction to get rice, to get fertilizer at the price they ought to get it. We want to see how we start giving children scholarship. We don't need to become president to do that. We've started doing it and we're going to roll it a mass in our campaign season to empower yes. Nigerians more. And I don't know, in our next um, um, section, maybe we we'll start giving we'll empowerment have... life. Yes, life yes. On, the, on your program. Uh, a couple life. of people have asked today, to be fair, a couple of people, when you mentioned, you know, Unique Foundation and, you know, what you've done so far. But before I go on, I want to let folks know the number you can see right now that people are sharing is for those who need scholarship. If you need scholarship, if you're at home because of the hassle strike, you want to take a course online, please send a text to that number to say yes or i am interested and they'll, they'll send you the link where you have a portal to sign in um i think we lost prof again i would love to you know have just a quick last words from him before we disengage okay let's hope that prof is going to come back thank you everyone for your time today please scroll through and save the number you might help somebody kindly share the number with someone you know who is at home right now all right prof is back again and then we'll close the session
Okay. All right, Prof. So this is the last lap for this session. Uh, since the network is trying not to let us be great, like people say. So for the empowerment, you know, you know, a couple of people have been asking, there are a lot of women here who have been following your work as well. So I just want to ask if there's a consensus that could be given to, you know, these women, you know, who have also joined this program today for us to empower some of them, give them hope, you know, for them to understand, you know, your passion for humanity. Is that something that um, could happen? So I can put out a post with that regards, work with your team to pick people who are eligible to get the funding, you know. So I want it to be live. And so when I post, they won't say it's audio. <laughs> of okay, course. Sir. Um, yes, you can go ahead. Let's, we've been empowered. There's nothing stopping us from empowering people who have genuine businesses, who really need empowerment to impact mm -hmm. their business. Because we want to see proofs. We want to empower people. And in, 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 in coming months, we want to see that they become millionaires. From empowerment, they've got it. And that comes through sincerity. That comes through training. That comes through funding. And monitoring to be sure that they understand what they ought to do and in the next step. Empowerment for us is not just about give money. Yes, money will be given. But it is more about following up, making sure that they, they understand what to do and what to do. And they must be disciplined to working with our team. We want to see that result, that in next coming months, that those that got thousands can say, oh, now my business is in millions. That is when we are happy. Because the only reason why I want to empower is to see that you are successful. It's not just to give money and tomorrow we ask for more money. So we are willing to work with you. We are willing. You can put the post out. Let people start sending the post to you. Then we work with our team to see those. We can select people and they come live. So yes. it doesn't say that we, we picked people we, they are with which people don't know. We have yes. been doing this and we'll continue to do this. But again, Let's get our voters' card. Yes, PVC. Get your voters' card. Get your PVC. After all is said and done, the only way you can vote, you know, for prof is to get your PVC. Voting is not on social media. You have to go to the polling booths and cast your votes. <laughs> that is the way to do it. And for the empowerment, you know, you've heard prof, we're not just giving up money. You need to have an ongoing business or a business plan that you want to send to his team and they're going to review that i'll put out a post on my facebook on my instagram on my twitter and the team would go you know on my page transparently to check when we've you know concluded and we've picked the beneficiaries we're going to come live again like you said so yeah. people know you discuss your plan you discuss you know what you've done with the money you got for the empowerment please let it be transparent, guys. Don't comment if you don't have a business plan. It is not giveaway money. It is money to support your business. All right? Yeah. So tell people, tell as many women as possible. Can men also comment, um, Prof? So it's oh, not just uh, women. Before they say I'm biased. And, and, yes, yes. And again, they have to also know that there will be a selection process. Mm -hmm. It is not everybody that applied that will get it. So mm -hmm. that tomorrow some people say, oh, I applied, it didn't give me, and mm -hmm. then it's not real. But Nigerians believe that no matter who you help, so far, so far they have not gotten the help, it's never real. Yes. So they must know that if, this, if you apply, we have to vet it. We have a number of people we can select, and we mm -hmm. can expand it based on need. So if you mm -hmm. apply and you didn't get it, please don't say that because of that you will not vote for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you should appreciate that, wow, if this man can do this. But we don't mm -hmm. know many people, you'll be surprised that Five million people can apply. You'll be surprised. Yes. But Nigeria yes. needs empowerment. Yes. Yes. So if five million people apply, apply can we, are we going to empower five million people? No. But we are going to select from that stream of people and empower mm -hmm. what we empower. We should do. And if you are not, if you are not selected, please, we still have more opportunities to work together. Imagine when I time. become a president, you yes. all will be empowered. Yes. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you very much, Prof, for your time today. I truly appreciate it. I mean, from the comments, people enjoyed the session. It's a learning call for me as well, you know, to know that with so much wisdom, you're coming with a wealth of knowledge to change things and shake things up. Um, I wish you well in 2023. And um, I encourage everyone here today, please get your PVC, vote accordingly. That's yes. the word, vote accordingly. All right? All right, yeah, Prof. Thank you very much, sir. Have an amazing evening. This is going to be on my page for anyone who wants to watch again. So you can always watch it on my page. 
and I'm going to tag Prof as well, so it will show on his own page as well for those who want to watch. So you know our word is our bond. You can always go back to the video and say they promise us empowerment to. It's you know it happened during this live session. All right, yeah. Prof. Have a good evening, everyone, and God bless you and thank you for joining. Bye.